Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince has a big problem. Now, I played the demo, and it was basically what I hoped the game would be as a fan of the original Dragon Warrior Monsters line of the games I played as a child. Minus, of course, some performance issues that I hope can be fixed later. My biggest problem came when I found out about the Day One DLC. Let's start with least bad to worst in my opinion, and I want to be clear, the worst would be a required DLC, where you're going to definitely want to get this so it's an extra purchase, is how I'm using the word worst. Let's begin by Treasure Trunks. Treasure Trunks will cost you six US dollars. Treasure Trunks features a mystical chest that contains a selection of items, but can only be opened once every hour. The chest contains 10 items in order, which are obtained one at a time in order. Once all the items have been obtained, the chest is replenished with an identical set of items that are acquired in the same order. You can use these items to strengthen your party in a number of ways. This DLC is mostly a timed-based assistance. It might be cheesable by changing the time on your Switch to fill your inventory with these items. Looking at the items, it doesn't look like anything game-altering instead of like a speed-up bonus. Of course, I think this should be in the base game, but it's not the worst. If anything, it might become annoying returning to this chest every hour if it's out of the way at all. The second worst, I would say, is Coach Joe's Dungeon Gym, which costs 10 US dollars. Coach Joe's Dungeon Gym features randomly generated maps that change each time you enter. These magical dungeons also come with restrictions on the monsters you can include in your party, such as those exclusively from the slime family or material family. You are also not allowed to take items with you and must scavenge the things you need from within the dungeons. These dungeons are designed to provide an additional challenge and as such are harder than anything you'll encounter in the main game. Fittingly, a boss awaits in the final section of each dungeon. Those who defeat it will be rewarded with a valuable item. To me, this sounds like post-game mode that a lot of people might not even be interested in, especially with online battling as an option. This is still something I think should have been in the base game, and it does give more content to the game, so for me, this makes it worse than Treasure Trunks. In my opinion, the Mole Hole for $10 is a must-have DLC, which makes it the worst one. The Mole Hole is a special dungeon that allows you to scout monsters that you've already befriended once before. The dungeon is divided up so that only monsters of a specific rank will appear. For example, rank F level monsters only rank F monsters, and level B contains only monsters from rank B. Furthermore, the large level and small level only large and small monsters respectively. The Mole Hole provides ample opportunity to reunite easily with monsters that only appear during specific seasons or weather conditions, and even those that can only be otherwise obtained via synthesis. So use your show of force to full effect, or hope monsters join you of their own volition after battle and grow your roster. This is crazy for everyone. This makes it trivialized to get monsters that are hard to get due to rank, or size, or season, or weather, or due to synthesis. This means the rarest, most difficult monsters are easy to get, from my understanding of this. Let's say you have a rank B synthesis monster you want to get, and it requires multiple hard-to-obtain seasonal monsters combined to reach. Well, you can go to the mole hole and get it. You can just go to the mole hole. Now, how useful that will be, I guess we'll find out once the game is fully released. But that sounds broken. Also, it could be an amazing training place if you can get high-level monsters there to train off of. Maybe not the best in the game. Again, we're going to see. So that $26 in DLC to have full access to everything day one. The Deluxe Edition is also not a discount at all. You just get all the DLC at once instead of buying it one by one after you purchase the game. Now, is this enough for me to not purchase the game for myself? No, this is a most likely day one purchase for me still. But, part of that is because I plan to make content for the game. If I wasn't planning on making content instead, I might wait for a sale, and then justify the DLC with the savings I have on the main game. Because to me, I feel the DLC is required to play this game, and I don't think that's a good thing for the game. I do not think it's a good thing that we're going to have this DLC day one, and it's going to be... You're going to feel left out if you don't have it, in my opinion, if you know the DLC exists. And because we have this online mode, if you're really into it, you're wanting to try different teams, and you're going to be leveling up quite a bit, 
it sounds like these DLCs are going to be very, very useful for you. Of course, Mole Hole, of course, all the items from that chest, and possibly the rare item you get at the end of those really hard dungeons might make getting the monster fully prepared for online play easier. To me, I think this should have all been put into day one of the game, no DLC, and then if they wanted to have other DLC, just release that later. I am kind of worried that if this DLC is successful, which I think it will be because I think it's required to play, that if they do continue this series forward, we're just going to have a bunch of DLCs, not just for this game, but maybe the next one as well.